The spirit of Python is real. This is an actual spirit according to the Bible in Acts 16.16. 16. And just three things that the Python does. Pythons squeeze. They squeeze the life out of you. Pythons will swallow their prey. So they'll use these in different strategies and tactics till they can overcome you using these different strategies. And also pythons are also soothsayers. So they use uh, different soothsaying methods. The Bible also calls them fortune tellers. They're the same thing. Fortune tellers, soothsayers. I'm going to explain this and share a little bit about it, but I just want to expose this spirit and some things that this thing does to be able to to de devour its prey and take over, especially the believer. Let's read Acts 16, 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Okay, so it actually says it's an actual spirit. Divination means puth, uh, python, which is pronounced puthon in Greek, who brought her masters much profit by what? Fortune telling. Another translation says sooth saying. And all that fortune telling or, or soothsaying is, is the ability to act in the prophetic, okay? Or it's also known as a seer. These are people that are obviously mouthpieces of God. But again, whatever God's promise is, the enemy will pervert that promise. And sometimes we're like, why do fortune tellers or why do these soothsayers, why does it seem like they're right? Because we believe the lie. So when we believe the lie, we submit to Satan's will. That's a whole other teaching. I just want to open that up because people always ask uh, about that. Verse 17, this girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaimed to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her master saw that the hope of the prophet was gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And we all know what happens after this is they get in prison. Now I'm going to stay there because I'm going to share how to overcome once this spirit tries to imprison you or entrap you or use these different strategies to try to prison you. But how are we going to get out? I'll share with this after. Now the three strategies of the cutting serpent, we just talk about what pythons do. I'm going to go from a place of a cutting serpent. These are the three strategies. Number one is language, two is lies, and three is lays eggs. Those eggs become your thoughts and they use seeds of lies to lay those into our thoughts. Simply Uncaged is really about being renewed in the mind. And the also the enemy used this in language. The enemy traffics in language and all that traffics means is a communication system. So he uses language to try to really deceive the believer. Deception's the fruit. The lie is the seed. Now, we went through a whole teaching on that in our podcast. If you guys haven't tapped in, it's called the Is This Spiritual Warfare? That's the title of that podcast. I want y'all to really see this because as we go into Genesis 3, this is going to make sense. Language, lies, lays eggs. Genesis 3 verse 1, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, touch it, lest you die. Now here comes the enemy. One, he doesn't even acknowledge God as Lord God. In that same sentence in verse one, it says that the, the serpent was more cutting than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. So the Lord God, Lord just means relationship. Then he comes and he asks Eve, has God indeed uh, said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? It's funny how the enemy loves to bring up re uh, religion, but not relationship. Why didn't he say Lord God? And Eve, she pretty much answered exactly what God told her in Genesis 2. Hey, out of everything, we can eat that except this one, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He's like, all right, cool. And then the serpent says to the woman, you, you shall not surely die. So this is the lie coming out. Again, language, language through trafficking and this communication through questions. So he'll start to question you and then he'll use a lie through that language. Again, verse four, then the serpent says to the woman, you ain't gonna die. You surely will not die. For God knows in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. You'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So here he comes, planting the seed, planting the lie, planting that it can also be a way of doubt because a woman could be like, what? 
Is am I missing out? Why why what what is God doing? Like why can't I eat of it? So he he brings doubt and he uses this in a form of temptation. He goes, "You ain't going to die." So here comes a lie because God and then he starts to blame God because God knew if you ate of it, you would know no more you'd be like God and you'd know the things of God. And it would make me think if I was in that scenario, did God not make me enough? So here comes your identity being attacked. <laughs> There's so much to this. Keep going. Verse six. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food. So these are the, the three temptations that it says in uh, the epistles of John, right? What's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And we see that all right here. So when the woman, verse six, saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband her and he ate. And the eyes of both of them were open and they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. These are the strategies of the cunning serpent. Language, lies, and laying eggs. Pythons lay eggs. Okay, so this is another form of that that serpent, that's, it's also, a, it's really a spirit. We just talked about spirit of divination in Acts 16, 16, a spirit of Puthon, which is really, it's Python, but it's pronounced Puthon in Greek. And we, it's just so amazing how we can really read the text to expose the enemy and the strategies. Because if we understand the strategies, we know how to overcome these specific strategies. There's nothing that uh, Jesus has, does not have power over. He has power over all principalities and powers. So we see how the enemy is using it, this cunning serpent from the garden, all the way to this spirit in the book of Acts. Now going back to the book of Acts, when you feel bound or chained up, because that's what the enemy does. He wants to make you feel locked up. So when he's squeezing you through chaining you up, locking you up, he's trying to swallow you. And that's where you become a slave to the enemy's plans, to the enemy's strategies, fear, anxiety, doubt, these things you become bondage to. To become bondage to something just means I'm a slave to it. And we see this in Acts 16, uh, verse 25 to 26. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. Oh, it's so amazing because this is them at midnight and Paul and Silas in verse 25, they were praying and singing hymns to God. This is an act of opening my heart and saying, God, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what the enemy's trying to do to squeeze me, to try to restrict me, okay, to try to hold me tight, chain me up, that stuff gets loosened in Jesus' name, by the power of the blood of Jesus, the power of the cross, and the authority that we have as kingdom ambassadors, children of God, we have authority when we know our identity in him. And it's so amazing because that's where the earthquake, the shaking of whatever circumstance I'm in, even though I might be chained, even though I might be bound, even though I might be in prison, God can shake that because Jesus, it says the spirit of the Lord has anointed us to preach good tidings to the poor. This is the prophecy with Jesus in Isaiah 61. This is Luke chapter 4, 18. It says the spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to let those that are in captivity to be what? Set free. Set free. So he sets us free and the shaking and the loosened, and it was through prayer and singing hymns to God. Now I want to give you all these three things on how to be able to overcome it based on what we just read in Acts 16 while they were imprisoned. And here's what's even great. The guard that was the keeper of the prison was about to kill himself. And instead of that, God always uses what the enemy meant for evil. God uses it for good. He came on to salvation and believed the Lord Jesus Christ. If you just keep reading in that text in Acts 16, but they were praying and singing hymns. Check this out. Three things, prayer, fasting, the word of God. This is how we, we can overcome this spirit. Prayer, fasting, and the word of God. I'm going to read this in Ephesians 5 verse 15. And then I'm going to leave with three keys on how to be able to walk in wisdom to be able to overcome any of these strategies, especially when it comes to the sneaky, cunning serpent, the spirit of Python. Ephesians 5 15. So then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. 
just reading these three scriptures, you can see that God is teaching us how to walk in wisdom. He says, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So number one, we have to have wisdom. We need to apply wisdom in our walk. Redeeming the time, verse 16, because the days are evil. To redeem the time is that is that is that ransom, that payback. Okay? To be able to redeem the time. So we gotta also uh apply wisdom to our number two is work. And then number three is therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And so number three is we gotta apply wisdom to God's will. Wisdom in God's will. This is how to overcome any of these wicked spirits, no matter what's going on. <laughs> Amen. Now let's keep reading. Because this is kind of like scripture interpreting scripture when I read Acts 16 of how the uh, the earthquake shook the prison. Verse verse uh, 18, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. Hallelujah. Verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Singing, making melodies in your heart. So do not be drunk in wine, which is dissipation. Dissipation just says waste of time. So I can't be wasting my time with the things of this world, the temptations of the enemy, the distractions that the enemy is sending my way. I got to be filled with the spirit and I got to fix my eyes on Jesus. I got to apply it, the wisdom in my, in my walk, my work in God's will. And what is God's will for my life? God's will is found in God's word. And as I'm praying, as I'm fasting, as I decrease, he must increase. These are ways to overcome this spirit that we feel like is really trying to restrict us, squeeze us, swallow us, okay? And speak things into our ears that our flesh likes, but the Holy Spirit does not agree with what any other devil-like spirit is trying to come at us. I pray y'all get wisdom in this and exposing the spirit of Python. I did another video not too long ago, probably in this last year, actually around this time where we talked about this a little bit more, some signs that you might be uh, under the influence of the spirit. So you guys go ahead, watch that video. God bless you all so much. I'll make sure that everything's in the show notes below in the descriptions. We got blogs. We have so many different resources. Again, we appreciate y'all. Hit the sub. I love y'all simply a cage. Take care in Jesus name.